To get started in Final Cut Pro, we need to go up to the main menu, go to Go, Applications, find Final Cut Pro, and open it up. You can also find it by going to the dock if you have Final Cut Pro in the dock, or a shortcut to everything is just type in Final Cut Pro, oh, and it pops up right there in the search bar. Just get anything, uh, not just Final Cut Pro. So um, if anything pops up, just cancel. So here we have our user interface. On the left-hand side, we have our media library. Right here in the middle, we have our um, viewer. Down here on the bottom half, this is our storyline. This is where we're going to build our project. So the first step we want to do is we want to go File, New, Library. So name this uh, the period that you're in. So let's say it's first period. The group that you're in, uh, capital letter. So I'm not in a group, so I'm just going to put X. So X. Then I'm going to put an underscore. And then the name of your segment. So I'm just going to put name of segments. Now, notice that I'm using underscores for spaces. Don't leave any spaces in a name. Uh, if there's a space in the name, like anime club, in between anime and club, just add a underscore instead of a space. Let's save everything on the desktop, just because that's the easiest place to find things. And if I need to go onto your computer and make any little adjustments on any of your segments, I need to know where it is quickly. Uh, so the desktop is a good place to um, store your projects. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my second step, which is to go File, New, Event. And this event, I'm going to name the exact same thing as I named the library. So 1x, in my case, underscore, name of segments. I'm going to OK that. It's going to uh, add that into the library that I created with the same name. Now I can delete that event that it created. So I don't need that one. Yes. So now I have my library. I have my event. And the last step, the third step in starting a project is I go up to File, New, and Project. So here, once again, I'm going to name this the exact same thing. So the period that you're in, the group that you're in, underscore, and the name of your segment. OK. So now I have my library, my event, and my project all named properly. Uh, now I can get going on editing. Grab your SD card, insert it into the back of the computer where you insert SD cards. Here you'll find uh, all of the footage from your SD card. Select the clips that you want to import. Maybe it's all of them, maybe it's just a few of them. I'm going to select some B-roll that I took uh, plus my interview. I'm going to make sure up here it says add to existing event and the uh, project that I'm working on, in this case 1x name of segment. And everything looks good. I'm going to import that. All right, now that my media has been imported, I can start working on my project. Uh, I'm going to zoom in out so I'm gonna click on command minus that's the short keyboard shortcut for uh, zooming out and I'm gonna look at the clips that I have here's my interview clip here's some of my b-roll and that looks great so I'm gonna start to build my segment now so the first thing I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to go through my b-roll clips and I'm gonna cut them up into little pieces, into a little montage. So 
Uh, the sunset clip looks pretty good. Let's I'm gonna get it where it starts coming down on the horizon. So maybe right about here. And I'm gonna hit the space bar to play and pause. So I'm gonna rewind with the J key. I'm gonna hit the pause button with the space bar. I'm gonna play fast forward with the L key. If you keep pressing the L key multiple times or the J key multiple times, it goes backwards fast forwarding and forwards fast forwarding. Um, and like I said, the space bar plays and pauses. So I'm just gonna go back and forth here until I find my perfect in point, which is going to be right there. Now I'm going to hit the I key on the keyboard. That sets an in point. So if you notice, I have my yellow box right here around my clip, and it starts where I wanted it to start. Now I just want a few seconds, maybe right to about there, and I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to hit the O key. That puts an out. And now here I have my part of my clip that's just a little sliver that's highlighted in yellow right over here. And I want to put that into my timeline. There's several ways to do that. I can just grab and drop it, but since it's such a small sliver, it's not showing me the hand key where I can just grab it and drag it down. So I'm probably gonna have to use one of these buttons. So I'm going to use this button right here where it says append the selected clip to the primary storyline or the selected storyline. So I'm gonna click on this button right here, the third button from the left next to the word index on our toolbar. And that adds that first clip down into my timeline. All right, so there's my first clip. I'm gonna to go to my other B-roll, so here's a nice cool drone shot of the front of the school. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna skim over this and find which one of these I like the best. I think I like this the best right here. So I'm gonna click right there and I'm gonna press the I key and that sets an in point. All right. And then I'm gonna play a little bit, my one, two, three, three seconds or so and I'm gonna hit the space bar and then I'm gonna hit the O key and now oh well this part of the clip right here is actually big enough where that my little hand shows up so I can just grab that and drag it down into my timeline and I'm gonna zoom my timeline by going uh, pressing command plus so you can see this a little better so here I have my first clip now my second clip now let's see, how about uh, a shot of our new pool? And I kind of like this where the drone goes right towards the football field lights. Kind of adds a cool dimension to it. So I'm once again going to hit the I key, that's the in point. And I'm gonna play this a little bit. One, two, maybe three seconds right there. And I'm gonna hit the O key. And I'm just gonna drag that into my timeline. So I have my third clip here. Now let's check out this one. Oh, the softball field, the old softball field. So I'm going to, I like this where it goes from low to high and you can kind of see all of South City and the bay behind. So I'm gonna start it right there. Hit the I key, hit the space bar. Play it for one, two, maybe three seconds. Hit the space bar again. I'm gonna hit the O key for the out. And I'm gonna grab this little section of the clip that I highlighted, that I selected. And there are my clips for my beginning montage. So I think I used, well, I think I used most of them. Oh, I forgot the football field one but we do have the football field in the uh, sunrise shot, so that's fine, we'll just keep it at that. So I'm gonna zoom out on my timeline. Again, Command minus zooms out, Command plus zooms in, so I'm gonna go Command minus, give myself a little room to look at over here on my timeline. So I put together my first clips. So let's do a little editing here. 
Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to fade this in. All right. And um, I'm going to go to my uh, transitions browser over here on the right. And I'm going to grab a cross dissolve. Cross dissolve is a fade in and out. So I'm gonna grab that cross dissolve and I'm gonna drag it where I want it. In this case, at the very beginning of my project. And then I'm gonna play this and oh, it fades in. If I wanna make that fade duration a little longer, I just grab one end of it and I drag it over to the right. That makes it longer. So now I have like, like a four second fade in. All right, let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna rewind my playhead here back to the beginning of my timeline. Hit the space bar to play back. And uh, we have this nice fade in with the, with the sunrise. Looks great. Then it cuts to the next clip. It cuts to the next clip and so on and so forth. I like editing to music. And you're probably gonna have music in your uh, project. So we only use music that we make ourselves in GarageBand or that we get in YouTube's audio library. So let me go ahead and show you how that works. So let's go to Safari. Let's go to Google and let's go to YouTube. You're going to have to have a Gmail account or YouTube account. Uh, Somebody in your group is going to need to be able to access YouTube with an account. You go up to your icon in the upper right hand corner and click on YouTube Studio. While you're in YouTube Studio over here on the left, you have dashboard videos, analytics, comments, transcriptions, other features. Go into other features and find audio library. Here you have thousands and thousands of songs and loops and sound effects, all kinds of things that we can use legally. So go ahead and sort or break down what you want. So I think I'm going to have something, how about pop? And let's, the mood, let's go happy, happy pop. And... Let's find, how about Silver Skies? I'll turn this up. Oh, I love that. All right, so I'm gonna go right over here to the right, click on download. It's gonna download that song. It's gonna load it into iTunes. I don't really want it in iTunes. Let's just quit that. And we don't need Safari anymore, so we can quit that. Also, here it is. It downloaded onto my desktop, which is great. If it didn't download onto your desktop, simply just go to your downloads folder, and it's probably there. All right, so let's go back to Final Cut Pro, and let's learn how to import media. So I'm going to go up to File, Import Media to get that music that I just got off YouTube into my project. So where is it? It's on the desktop. Silver Skies, there it is. And I'm gonna import that. All right, here's my song. Great, I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna drag that down into my timeline underneath my video. And let's play that back. And I like making cuts right where the music is. So I'm gonna turn skimming off here so it's not too distracting. And I'm gonna turn on snapping. So right here on my toolbar over here on the right, you wanna turn on snapping. This is just gonna help uh, editing and make things you know, get put in their proper place. So uh, I can see down here by the audio waveforms that this is where my music kind of kicks in. So I want my clip to cut from my sunset clip to the next in front of school clip. So what I can do is, is I can simply grab the end of the sunset clip and kind of nudge it back. So now, 
as you can see, my video clip changes right when the music changes. Yeah, and I can keep doing that for all of my clips. Okay, so every time it does that little clappy sound, I'm going to just grab an end and collapse it right to that point. So, and then my last one. Okay, my last one's right there. And now all my clips are cut to the beat. So let's rewind that and play it back. Okay, so that's pretty good. So now we can get to my interview. So you have your interview here. Uh, I did an interview of myself uh, with a green screen background. So I don't want the whole interview because there's part, part of it where I'm sitting down and getting the microphone ready and whatnot. So I'm gonna find that perfect spot that I want. Okay, so I'm gonna start it right there. I'm gonna, once again, Push the I key for your in point. Okay, and we'll finish it there. <laughs> All right, hit the out key. Uh, once again, just drag and drop. If the uh, clip is too thin, too skinny, once again, you can use your buttons right down next to index. Uh, you can press E on the keyboard for the sh uh, quick, the shortcut to get the append um, action, which will put the clip right after the last clip. All right, so here we go. So we have our uh, intro, and now we cut to our uh, interview. So as you can see, we have a green screen and we, we're gonna replace that green with something. So you can replace the green screen in the background with video uh, or a still image. Uh, I'm gonna go with a still image. Um, if you do find a still image online, I'll give you a quick tip on how to do that. Let's go to Google and let's look for a picture of Puerto Vallarta. I love Puerto Vallarta. So we're going to go Puerto Vallarta and click on images. And right here, you'll see it says tools. Click on tools. And then you have another menu that says size. Click on large. So you want the largest resolution uh, photos that you can get. Um, and, and here's a good one right here. You don't want uh, small resolution photos. It just doesn't look well. So once you find a large resolution photo, uh, right click that. We're gonna save that image to the desktop. Okay, I'm done with Safari now. And just like my audio, I'm going to import by going File, Import, Media. And there it is. I'm gonna import that. All right, so now I have my photo of Puerto Vallarta. It's beautiful. And I'm gonna drag that photo and I'm gonna place it underneath my clip that has the green screen. And I'm gonna drag it, drag the duration so it matches the duration of my green screen clip. So my picture is the same length below my green screen clip. But still, hey, we don't see anything. All right, well, we need to go to our effects browser, which is over here on the right next to the transitions browser. And we're looking up for keying. Once we find keyer, here's the keyer effect. Simply drag and drop that effect on the green screen clip. And ba-boom, there we go. There's one little problem, though, is that that photo aspect ratio isn't the same as the video. All right, there's a little black at the top and at the bottom, so it's not the same size. So we're gonna need to stretch that picture out, no problem. Select the photo, and then click on the transform tool. So here we have our transform tool, 
And then once I select the transform tool, I notice I have these little purple dots around the photo and a wireframe. I'm just going to grab one of those corners and I'm going to click and drag and stretch it out till it snaps into place. Now it's filling the entire screen. I click on done and that looks a whole lot better. So we have our intro clips and then it goes to our uh, interview which looks good. That's fantastic. So let's add in some titles. So we're gonna add two different titles. Most segments come with two different titles. Uh, a full screen title and then a lower third for anyone who is speaking. So let's go to our full screen title first. We're gonna go up here to our titles browser, in the upper left hand corner. Click on that and here we have all kinds of uh, templated titles out here. I'm just gonna grab a basic title. I'm gonna click on that and drag it where I want it to go. There we go. All right, it says title. I'm going to click inside of the title. And over here on the right in my inspector, I can change the title type. So here I'm going to put uh, interview with Boyd. All right, now this looks pretty blah. So I'm going to increase the size first. So I'm going to highlight everything and increase the size. And then white on white, eh, that doesn't look very good either. So I'm going to change a few things. Uh, so I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to change the face color. So let's change the face color to maybe, uh, how about blue? Hmm, we'll see. And then uh, maybe an outline. We'll show the outline color, not red. That's El Camino color. Boo. Let's have it white. So blue and white, South City colors. And let's increase the width so you can really see what's going on there. That looks good. I can even put a glow or a drop shadow. So let's do a drop shadow. And let's increase the distance a little bit. Increase the blur. Increase, increase the opacity. Eh, so you can kind of see it. it. Sets it out a little bit. Not the greatest title, but you get the idea. I'm going to increase the size of just the Boyd. There we go. And I'm going to grab it and kind of center it up there in the middle by just simply clicking inside the title and dragging it. And there we have our full screen title. I'm sure you can do a lot better job than that, but that's just to show you that you can uh, customize your titles. There's all kinds of uh, templates in here that you can use as well. So over here on the left next to titles, toggle that down and you have subcategories and one of those is called lower thirds. We're going to use a lower third anytime somebody is talking on screen. So I'm going to go through these lower thirds. You can build your own lower third or you can simply grab one that has already been made for you. So let's just grab one of these and again drag and drop it where you want it to go. I'm going to stretch it out so it's on the screen for about, let's see, seven seconds. That sounds about right. So there we go. Obviously, I have to change the name where it says name. Just click inside of that. I need to have my title selected first. Click where it says name and change that. I'm going to say Mr. Boyd. And under description, uh, you put the description of the person, not like what they look like, but what they are. I'm a teacher. So if you're interviewing the anime club president, you would put anime club president. Or if you're interviewing the girls soccer team, you would say girls soccer player, something like that. All right. So now we have our lower third. If the person is off to the left or off to the right, or there's multiple people in the shot that you need to put a lower third to, you can simply go here to the transform tool and you can drag this wherever it needs to be. You can have multiple titles stacked on top of each other. Uh, so I could even copy and paste this by just going command C, copy and command V, paste. And now I have two identical uh, titles 
I can click on one of them and have Mr. Boyd on the right. And I can have Mr. Boyd on the left. If there was two Mr. Boyds, uh, you get the idea. So I'm just gonna delete uh, that right there and go back to just one Mr. Boyd and click on done and we're done with that title. So we have our transition. We have our title. We have our green screen. And let me just show you one other thing. Let's say I want to put in a still image. Let's use the same still image that we used before. So let me go back to our media browser in the upper left-hand corner. So this is our library here. And let's grab this uh, same photo of Puerto Vallarta. And I'm going to drag and drop that down here in the timeline. Make it about eh, seven seconds long. And here's a cool little effect that you see often in video when they show a still image. They use motion within the still image. This is called the Ken Burns effect. So I'm going to select the uh, photo. I'm going to go here to my transform tools and underneath the transform there's crop. So once I select crop, underneath it says trim, crop, or Ken Burns. I'm going to click on Ken Burns. Notice I have two wireframes. One is green and one is red. The green wireframe is where I want it to start the red wireframe is where I want it to end. So I want it to start, I'm gonna swap those using this button in the upper left hand corner. I want it to start wi uh, wide, or sorry, start in tight and then go wide. And I'm gonna collapse that even more so I can kind of see these people walking on the beach and then it zooms out to show like the whole bay. Let's see what that looks like and click done. And let's play that back. I should turn that down. And notice that we have movement on a still image. That's pretty cool. Uh, I want to see my whole timeline, so I'm going to go Shift Z. That's a little shortcut for you. And I'm going to grab my audio clip down here and I'm going to collapse it all the way down to where my segment ends. I'm going to hit Shift Z again and that shows my whole timeline here in my window. And let's do some audio adjustments. So the problem with this right here is that my background audio is still on high or pretty loud uh, when my interview starts. And I can't hear the interviewee, which is myself. I'm going to turn the volume up by simply hovering over the volume part, the audio part of the clip, and drag the volume bar up, which is this little line right there. And down below here, I'm going to make some uh, adjustments on my audio. I don't want to stop my audio. I just want it to turn down. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put down some audio keyframes. So how you do that is you hold down the Option key, hover over the volume bar on the audio clip, hold down the Option key. As you can see, there's a little diamond in the bottom right-hand corner of the Select tool. This is telling me that I, I have keyframes are about to be dropped in if I click. So I'm going to click once. I'm going to move it just a little to the right or left, click again. So now I have two keyframes and I can grab these keyframes and move them where I want. But what I want to do is I want to hover over the right hand side of my keyframes, hover over the volume bar, click and drag down. So now I'm just turning down the right hand side after my keyframes. The left hand side, the beginning of the audio stays the same. So here we have our audio is turned up and then it turns down and then you can hear me talking. Cool. So that's some audio adjustments. Also, let's say we want our audio to fade in and out. So let's say our audio here in the beginning, I want it to fade in. I hover over the beginning of an audio clip. And I notice that my select tool turns into two arrows, or sorry, two triangles facing the opposite direction. I click down and drag to the right, and that'll fade my audio in. If I do that at the end, 
I click down and drag to the left, I'm fading my audio out. So that's how you would fade your audio in and out at the beginning and end of clips. Okay, so once we've finished our segment, uh, we're gonna wanna export. So what should we do? First, we need to go up to File, Share, and there should be a video art segment default. So click on video art segment. It's going to say, uh, here's the info. Make sure that it is named correctly. Again, the period, the group, underscore, and the name of the segment. Then you're going to click on next, and you're going to pick a de destination where your segment is gonna go. I suggest putting it onto the desktop so it's, you can find it easily. Then click on save. If you click on this little button right here, it'll show you uh, the task at hand. So right now it is sharing, it's writing, basically compressing our segment. Once it finishes, it'll tell you, hey, successful. All right, so if you look onto the desktop, uh, here is our segment right here. So I'm gonna double click on that. I'm gonna check it out. Oh yeah, fantastic. All right, so it looks good, it works. Watch the whole thing. And then I'm going to want to plug in the USB into my computer. I wanna drag this onto the USB. Make sure to wait until it's completely copied onto the USB. Double check by double clicking the USB and making sure that it is uh, properly copied onto the USB and then you can turn that in. And then you are done. Congratulations, you've just made a segment, and I'll talk to you soon.